This issue of Pathé Gazette brings you a pictorial record of a great naval occasion. Two new capital ships, HMS Howe and HMS Anson, are brought into commission. The finishing touches are made by the painters and shipwrights as 35,000 tons of fighting steel are got ready for handing over to the Royal Navy. From the armor-plated hull there pours a small army of workmen, their solid work completed. From now on, the battleship is the home of the men who will sail her. The ship's complement comes aboard. These are the men who will work and fight aboard HMS Howe under their commanding officer, Captain Woodhouse. Woodhouse of the Ajax. The busy provisioning of ship is underway. From the railway siding is unloaded food to fill the vast storerooms. Sacks of sugar, beans, flour, potatoes. Crates containing raisins, tin peas, sardines and no doubt bully beef. Food for 1,500 men. Settling down and posting aboard a new ship is a busy time. It's all very new and maybe a little strange. Now we see the actual moment when the captain takes over the ship from its builders. Rapidly the great vessel takes on its warlike character. Shells for her 14-inch guns are slung over to fill her magazines. Projectiles for her main armament. There's fighting talk in them there pills. Money, too, has a way of talking. The first pay parade aboard comes as a welcome relief to a very busy crew. On the quarterdeck, the chaplain of the fleet holds his service of dedication. A moment when all seek by prayer God's blessing on the ship and her endeavors. The supreme moment of departure from the graving dock is at hand. One of Britain's newest battleships is about to move from her berth out into the open waters of the Firth of Forth. With inches only to spare on either side, it is a feat of navigation which calls for infinite skill on the part of the senior Admiralty pilot. Slowly, the 35,000-ton monster edges her way. Foot by foot, HMS Howe is helped out by tugs and straining horses. The slightest error of judgment might cause serious damage. Every man aboard must feel a thrill of pride as the great warship gathers speed and begins to pulsate with life as she heads for the blue water where she will display her powers. Looming large ahead of her, the fourth bridge, which has known many such glorious moments, seems to open its great spans as if in welcome to the newcomer. Deep in the glistening engine room, the engineers tend her with the care of mothers. The machinery settles down to a steady, vibrant hum. In this maze of gauges, valves, throttles and dials, excitement is mixed with skill, but vigilance never relaxes. Rising hugely in her natural element, the great ship is subjected to every kind of trial. Now and then she shudders as her tremendous power is put to the test. A mounting wake boils astern as power is increased. How is taking the bone in her teeth? How carries four aircraft and one seaplane. The latter is made ready for catapulting. As the engine is revved up, the signal to fire the propelling charge is given from the bridge. The sister ships Anson and Howe mount 10 14-inch, 16 5.25 guns, four multiple pom-poms and other weapons. Prior to the big shoot, the 14-inch turret guns have their tampions removed. And now those guns speak for the first time. Anson and Howe are now on active service. Born during the dark days of the war, they now emerge in all their glory to add their weight to the British Navy. No longer are they merely things of steel. They live, possessing the soul and the voice of Britain.